Hey, welcome everybody. Today, what we are going to be doing is we're going to look at chemistry, chapter one, section two, classification of matter. And what we're trying to do today is we're trying to take a hunk of matter, matter, remember from the last lecture, is stuff, and we're going to try to put it in categories. That's what you do when you classify. Does this represent an element, a compound, a mixture, and what are the different terms for this? So in this unit, um, there's a lot, or this lesson, there's a lot of terms. So you may want to jot uh, these notes down as you go. And if you need to pause the video and you know look things up whatever it takes okay so when we classify matter remember matter is anything that has mass takes up space we call that stuff um, matter can be um, it can fit in different categories so it can be something that we call pure or it can be a mixture so we're going to kind of introduce the four main categories and then we're going to talk about each one and show you guys what each one represents so basically you're pure if you're an element an element is made of just one atom. A compound, these are made of molecules, um, formula units. Uh, you could be a heterogeneous mixture or you could be a homogeneous mixture. So we'll kind of dissect these terms and then we're going to put stuff in categories. And then we're going to look at particulate models of the universe as we go. Okay, so remember, matter can be an element, compound, or a mixture. In those mixtures, it can be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Um, so by definition, pure substances are elements and compounds. Pure substances are made of just one kind of atom or molecule. So I think it's a big concept where can you have pure water? Well, yeah, you can have pure water. Water is made of H2O. You can have just H2O. Um, can you have water that's mixed with stuff? Yeah, absolutely. You could have ocean water, which has a bunch of stuff in it. Um, so that would be under a mixture. And I think students tend to have problems kind of conceptualizing what things are and where they fit in this thing. So remember, matter can be pure or matter can be a mixture. And so we're going to look at what they look like each way. Okay, now um, you're going to find these particulate representations very super common. Okay, so if things are made of an atom, these are elements, they are just going to be um, unbonded typically. So this represents an an, an atom okay uh, that would be a sulfur atom it's not bonded or if an, an element is made of just one atom an element can also be made of a molecule so I don't know if you've ever heard but oxygen is O2 it's diatomic so do you see how they're each composed of one atom so these particular representations show um, show atoms or molecules if they're all made of just one they're an element now if they're combined with other stuff this is what we call a molecule. And molecules are the smallest part of a compound, and so they're actually connected, they're combined. And so this represents a compound. Now this represents a compound, this one right here, uh, B, represents you have a molecule with an atom. So when we draw these, sometimes you'll have to say, okay, that represents this category. Remember, there are four categories. You could be an element made of just one atom, a compound made of where they're connected like this, or you can have a mixture where things are different and there's different parts of matter. Okay, so good, right? So good. Okay, so when we classify a mixture is basically just a blend of two or more uh, types of matter. And so each one um, has their own identity and they remain that way. So for example, a great example of this, let me just go there, um, would be like pepperoni pizza, right? If you don't like the pepperoni, you can pick them off. It's still pizza, right? Each one have its own characteristic, um, but you know they can be mixed physically. They usually can be physically separated. So mixtures, by definition, are there's more than one type of matter present, and each type of matter retains its own identity and properties. Now, this is kind of a a, a term that some students get tripped up on. So homogeneous means basically um, the composition is the same, but yet each part still maintains its properties and they can be physically separated. Physically separated means I could separate them some way. Okay, so a uh, best way to look at this, they say salt water solution. So if you have salt and water, like if you drink salt water, it's salty when you drink it, it's wet when you drink it. Each part of that mixture maintains its properties and you can physically separate. If you just boil off the water, you have salt and you have water separated. So a homogeneous mixture, it looks like it's all the same. We think about it, salt water looks like it's all the same. That word sameness, right, means homogeneous. Um, but you, you really can't see the, the, the types of, mix, of parts of the mixture. 
So we call those homogeneous. Those are solutions. Alloys are solutions. So like if you have sweet alloy wheels, they actually melt one metal into another and you can't tell the difference. Those are examples of homogeneous mixtures. Air is actually a mixture. You know, we have CO2, you have oxygen, you have everything kind of mixed together, nitrogen, and you can't see the difference. It's homogeneous. Now, heterogeneous, you can actually see the difference. Okay, so Italian dressing is a great example of a heterogeneous mixture where there are different parts. Each part maintains its own property. Typically, these things are things you have to shake. Um, you know, those are, you know, pepperoni pizza. We talked about it as a great example of a heterogeneous mixture. Okay. Um, now, when you look at this, you know, you might just kind of look at these pictures again. These are particulate representations of things. So does anyone see, let's do two. So if we're going to talk about this, do you see how they're made of just one atom, right? So this is actually represents what we call a pure substance. And this would be made of, this would be an element. And this is definitely homogeneous because it's all the same. This would represent, number one, would represent a, um, a mixture, Okay, and it, we would definitely call it heterogeneous. It's a mixture of a compound. See how they're all connected and elements. These are not connected. This one is also a mixture. It's, it looks like it's two different compounds. This one would be a compound. Number five would actually be a compound. The, um, it would be pure. Substances are pure. They all have the same composition throughout. And this would be made of molecules. And then if you take a look at number four over here, again, this would be pure. And this would definitely be a compound. This would represent an element, but it's a mixture of elements. See how that each one is a little bit different. So we're going to be working through this today and over the next couple of days on identifying these like particulate representations of matter. How does it look at, at the molecular level and then or at the atomic level? And then how do we classify things? How do we put them in categories? All right, here's the other type. Okay, so this is just showing you physical examples. This would be a homogeneous mixture. It looks all the same. This would be a heterogeneous mixture where you can actually see physical separation. Pure substances, they have fixed composition. Their elements, their compounds. We talked about this. Um, you know, if you have pure water in Japan and pure water in Ohio, they're exactly the same properties, right? Like, but if you have a pepperoni pizza in Ohio and then, you know, you have one in Japan, they may not be exactly the same because they're mixtures. You can try your best, but usually there's a little bit of variation with mixtures. All right, let's just keep rocking this out. We're going to finish up with this. Okay, so when you are trying to classify things, you have to picture them in your head, first of all. Okay, so when we picture concrete, you know, I don't know if you've ever tore up a sidewalk or whatever. Concrete is not pure. Okay, there's water in it. There's stones in it, there's rocks in it, there's concrete in it. So we would definitely call this a mixture, right? Now, if we look at it, and since it has different parts, it has the rocks, it has the concrete portions, this would definitely be hetero, right? Because you can see different parts. Okay, now if we take pure sugar and pure water and mix them automatically, that's a mixture. So that would be a mixture. And then when you mix sugar and water, can you see a difference? Is there a different part of it? No. Okay. Now you could make a heterogeneous mixture. If you dump so much sugar and it wouldn't dissolve anymore, then you'd have a sugar part and a solution part. But we're just saying if you take a normal amount of sugar, a normal amount of water, they dissolve. And so this would be a homogeneous mixture. Remember solutions are homogeneous mixtures. All right. Straight up iron. Okay. So if you look, iron is Fe and it's, it's right there. It's on the periodic chart. If it's on the chart, it's made of one atom. It's a pure substance. That is an element. OK, because it's not connected. And if I were to draw the particular representation, it would just be a sphere. Right. It's just something that's not bonded. OK, now you can kind of already see this next one. Do you see how limestone, um, you know, these would be caves and things like that, um, is a bunch of elements kind of merged together. Right. Combined together. So this represents a compound because they have a formula. Right. And compounds are but substances. You can actually have pure calcium carbonate. All right. What about the ocean? So the ocean is definitely one giant mixture. And, okay, so, you know, if you're talking about the ocean as a whole, it's going to have boats, it's going to have, like, fish in it. So I would call it a heterogeneous mixture. Now, if you're talking about a scoop of seawater, a scoop of seawater is going to look all the same. So I would call that a homogeneous mixture. And I think this is where you have to clearly define what portion you're talking about. How about we just say a scoop? of the Pacific Ocean, like a cupful. So I would call that homogeneous.
Magnesium, again, this represents a substance because elements are substances on the chart behind me, and it represents an element. Okay, acetylene, acetylene, see how it's combined? This would represent a compound. That's a substance. Substances are elements or compounds, and that would definitely be a compound. All right, we're going to end this here. We're going to do some practice together. We're going to kind of discuss this, uh, but that is our second session on classifying matter and understanding the different parts. All right, we done.